Night Terrors The Flash, number two, written by Alex Pacmadel, with art by Daniel Bayliss, Tom Derenick, Igor Monti, Pete, uh, Pete Pantazis, and Simon Boland. In this issue, we pick up where we left off in the last Night Terrors Flash issue, where Flash is desperately trying to go back in time in his nightmare because Wally West, the kid Flash, was killed by Gorilla Grodd using the Spear of Destiny. And before Wally was going to die, he said there was something inside the lightning, something in the speed force that was preventing me from moving as fast as I want to, and that's why I got killed. Like, you know, I'm about to die now. And Barry's trying to figure out how to do this. He's going to go back in time, even though he's not supposed to, and try to prevent Wally's death. But every time he goes back, he can see this thing in the, in the, in the, in the lightning and the speed force that's preventing him from moving fast enough to save the day. And in this, we see him doing it over and over and over again, going back and forth throughout time, trying to save Wally West. And for some reason, <laughs> there's a, uh, there's friction in the speed force now because of that thing, resistance. And my body had to compensate, which made Flash into, like I said previously, some kind of Dr. Hyde werewolf monster thing where he's just this complete monstrosity. At first he was like a hunchback and it yeah. was scaring me. Then he like morphs into morphs. It's very odd, right? I'm telling you, he looks like he's taking some really bad blockbuster serum at some point and he's just going to keep doing this. But it's it, the thing about I liked about the first issue because Barry, more than anything, is going to try to save Wally. That's the basis of his nightmare. But things like uh, just jump in there that don't make sense. But Barry goes with it because it is a dream like anybody else would do in a kind of dream where thing, weird shit just shows up. And you go with it and you move on to the next part of the dream. And even the point where you know, after all of these different attempts, he comes back to see Wally once again. And then his mother shows up and they're like, hey, Ma, what are you doing here? That's weird. But she just pretty much, you know, comes in does her thing and then leaves and the idea is like you you have to go keep doing this barry you have to run you have to and it just seems like the idea of insomnia being in control of like the nightmare being his mother and wanting him to continue doing what he's doing to keep the dream going longer so maybe insomnia could search barry's mind for the nightmare stone yeah again i think that by the end you get the uh, but it's weird i think that this one might play out actually what i was saying earlier the idea where insomnia is trying to create these monsters because it's his mom who I would have right away. I mean, if I'm Barry, I'm like, listen, I know, Mom, that you're not alive, but that's not throwing me off. It's that you say you brought me fried chicken and you have a goddamn big burger, you know, big belly, belly burger. burger deal. Uh, you said fried chicken, lady, but she seems like, oh, you, you, you got to get back to it. You got to get in. At one point, he looked like one of those big battle droids in the prequels. Like, he's so, like, over the top at the <laughs> time. Like, he's weirding I'm t- me t- out. T- t- I'm telling you, to me, he looks like a hairless werewolf. Yeah. It's it's not good to look at And then even as he's going You get some okay moments And this is where this is going to be a weird show For what I say about some things Because this book I'll give Alex Pagnadol some credit here He's trying to do something he, He's trying to use this Hey, you just do the nightmares He's trying to do some sort of intricate story The problem is I think it's a little too intricate for what we know is not well, real that's anyway. The thing. I, I agree. So that because I was really like into the idea of the first issue it. because it, yeah. it felt like it was doing more than any other nightmare where it really wanted to be a nightmare scenario, I but think actually he tried telling too a story. Much now, right? And I agree to the point where he knows he needs more speed. He's gonna go back up to the Justice League Watchtower and like, you know, fight Hal about going back and doing this to the point where Hal is like, you know, pretty much, you know, his body's ripped limb from limb if I Barry was like, pull yourself together, Hal, because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't need to. And he goes to the 25th century to go to, uh, go see Eobard Thawne and get the Spear of Destiny from the Flash Museum of the 25th century and steal Eobard's speed because he needs more speed. He needs the uh, Spear of Destiny to stop Grodd and all of these things. It is a lot of story in this, but what does it do ultimately for what we're doing for, what we're saying for Barry or anything? Because like, is it just ultimately Barry is willing to cross the line for friends and family? Like he is always like, you know, even though he's like this light and hope and you never think of Barry as anybody, but somebody who walked the line steadily. But this shows you that maybe in his deepest, darkest subconscious, he can go further and like darker than he ever wants to. It's weird because I didn't think that the play to me was, you know, what we would normally expect at first was, and you said it last issue, the idea that he will sacrifice himself for anybody. And that's really cool. It goes a little too far. He ends up where also just other things thrown in that awful Hal Jordan that's all burned up and shit. Oh, yeah. Like you're never going to really have any time to develop that. But, you know, Hal gets ripped apart, but nothing is going to wow you because you know it's not real. You well, know, even it's the not ideas happening. of these things, like I said, like, yo, know, is it that Barry is willing to go too far in his own subconscious? But even in his weird nightmare dream, like we continue on with this, this, the scene where he fights Eobard Thawne. He shoves it, he'll vibrates his hand into Eobard's chest and then rips it out, but his hand stays inside Eobard's chest. So 
He has a, a hand missing, and we continue to have Barry's hand missing the entire issue, and then sucks Eobard's speed out of his body, leaving him with nothing left, and then goes back to the past to go to try to save Wally West over and over again, only to find out the thing that's been inside the Speed Force this entire time is actually all the times that Barry's gone back in time, and they've become that's this amalgam inside the Speed Force and became this weird, evil, dead monstrosity that now he has to kill. I didn't want the monstrosity, though. <laughs> I actually thought that it was just going to be that play of, oh my god, it was me doing this, and I was fighting against it, like that sort of thing, but it ends up that crazy, crazy-looking monstrosity. But, like, what, I don't even know what's more of a monstrosity. You have this collective of Barry Allen's Flash inside the streak of lightning that is the Speed Force, but then you have Barry Allen himself with long werewolf dog legs that bend like, you know, a dog's legs would bend, a stumpy hand, and a spear of destiny while he has, like, a, like a, a freaking back that goes right into his head with no neck, a flat front face. I, I like It just gets so fucking weird, and I don't understand I don't even know what happening. you're trying to do into at this point in time. Like, I know it's a nightmare, but this... The scene, like all the other stuff, it feels kind of a natural to a dream. Him becoming this weird monstrosity is like, oh yeah, my body had to compensate for the friction. I'm like, this and, is and weird. And that's, that's the weird play is, again, by the end, and this is the book that I actually was talking about. I couldn't remember if it was this one. But at the end, when you have to be continued in the pages of Night Terror's Night's End, you do end up seeing insomnia. You end up seeing the Wonder Woman evil version there and some of these other crazy things and that way it's that's what insomnia is doing he's gathering up these characters and you ended up having them at least in a, a maybe the most clever way you said that because the thing is when we have barry eventually wake up because wally wakes him up he's been running yeah, around wally like in his guessing. sleep and well for some reason wally didn't go to sleep this whole time and like, or he woke up beforehand i don't know how the rules work because Barry's woken up by Wally West, but then you have Insomnia and his weird horde of monstrosities. I only looked at that front werewolf looking fuck and thought, man, that looks a lot like what Barry looked like in his dream. I thought, that's a weird, like, you know, coincidence. But I never, I never looked at the people in the background and thought anything more of them besides for, hey, it's just some more bullshit sleepless yeah, nights. Yeah, it looks like those are like the heroes and their nightmares. Because I, 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 I think can that see that the one the that might be Wonder Woman, but I think that's the That's the only one the, that uh, I can see, right? The, the queen, but like, who's the rest, though? Yeah, we'd have to see, but I think that that's what's going on. They're gathering them up. Then I also, just because I wanted to in the giggle, I just thought that for good measure, that barn and that play, that that's the sanctuary. It's burning now. <laughs> they come back and that you thing's a barn. barn. I like, that. That's right. got a steeple. That looks like a church that Barry set on fire. It's a really intricate story in a way that that doesn't not, need to be. Yeah, and, like, and that's I think the it's, thing. It's, it's a weird mixed bag for me because I appreciate how much tr- like you know trying went into telling this b- story that doesn't ultimately matter because this is a tie into an event. Like we said in the first thing, yeah. it doesn't matter for what we learn in Night Terrors number three. But it's it trying matter. so damn hard at not having to do anything. It, and the thing is, like, I appreciate it, but, like, would I have, like, I don't know. Because feel, I feeling know. like you're not, like, doing less might have been more in the scenario, even though we'll have issues that do pretty much what feels like nothing. I'll bitch that there's nothing going on here. It's, it's weird. I don't know how to feel about it. That's the issue. And I, when we go and talk about a couple of others today, the, again, there's going to be ones that I bet you mean you don't quite agree on. But the idea that they well, do a lot. Did like way less than this, way more enjoyable. That's the one I'm talking about, Eric. So we actually agree. What what I was and when you add that Green Lantern one, and we'll get to it. Obviously, when we do that, you showcase how badass how Jordan is, and you just let that you let it go the entire time. And I appreciate you for doing that. This kind of wants to do that, but it got lost along the way with too much. There's too much entanglement. Well, where when you though, have Werewolf Barry, it gets weird. <laughs> yeah. You also, in this, you actually, where, and I keep bringing this up each week, where somebody said, well, maybe this Night Terror is originally, they thought, might be something where you're going to introduce some characters, some concepts, things like that, that new readers might not know. And you could have done something with Eobard. You could have done something with that, but it's just everything is just piled on top. And then, like you said, you get weird friction burn. Barry turns into werewolf. I don't know what's going on, and let's get the hell out of here. And the thing is, I probably would have had the entire thing about Eobard Thawne because, in my mind, more than anything, the reverse Flash is the ultimate nightmare of Barry Allen for everything he's done and what he could do again. And, it, you know, you're just throwing some things in here, but what would you give it? Ultimately, I'm going to give this a... 
Tony, I really enjoyed the art. And like I said, I appreciate no, all okay. the depth that went into telling this story and what it wanted to do. It's just off the wall, weird in the nightmare scenario. Like I'm telling you, the nightmare scenario, it's cool how we jump from scene to scene. Things don't make sense, but they don't need to. And Barry goes along with this crazy scenario just to save Wally. It's cool, but it's just so much. So look, I'm, I'm going to give it a six out of 10. And it's just, it's yeah. a lot. I really appreciated that first issue, but this one just feels like it's somehow even way too much more than we had in that first issue. I'm a five, and it's regular five. I wouldn't give him an F. Five. I think he's trying. He's trying more than some of these others are doing, but it just didn't pan out. It really kind of didn't make much sense by the end. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.